Well, welcome everybody. I'm glad so many of you uh, showed up. When I <coughs> sent out the email, I believe, um, because when I wrote the draft that I gave everyone an option to also participate in the world. And I'm actually in that room and I'm it. So I assume everybody likes the Zoom better or it was simply easier or for some reason it didn't get included. I'm not sure which of those <coughs> are the, uh, in. I don't know, but I'm going to go to the world anyhow to do something else, if nothing else. I've pasted into the chat a document. For those of you that like to help, you might copy it because people will be joining and saying, how do I get it? Where is it? How come I don't have it? That sort of thing. Uh, oh, John has actually joined us in the in the Alpine Lodge, um, where I'm also broadcasting. Um, welcome. I have obviously more than one computer, which I'm, I'm not saying I'm proud of that. I'm just saying it is what it is. Um, what we're going to talk about today is a couple of things. And... Um, I'm not, let me see, how do I get this over where John is? So I'm going to go here. Uh, and I'm, this meeting is being recorded. I'm agreeing that you can record the meeting. And then uh, I'm going to copy this. Um, anyhow, John may have to get it from the other, the other, uh, the other spot. Well, whatever. Um, and just doing both at the same time. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about, and there's going to be a time afterwards for us to discuss, you know, questions that you have that may be of a burning nature. The first is a link to the California Association of Realtors interactive shareable reports, which <clears throat> usually they update around the 16th or the 17th of the month. Um, and you can see there's a variety of them. I'm going to be doing a updated version of the buyer presentation because people are concerned about, you know, lawsuits and MLS and commissions and buyer rep agreements. And I actually use some of these slides in that presentation. So if I were in a buyer's presentation, I would use the buyer's guide, among other things. And you can see it's broken down by county. Within counties, there's cities, not every city. And you get choices of a PDF, which is an eight and a half by 11, a Instagram, which is square, and PPT is a PowerPoint. But no, it doesn't come down as a PowerPoint. It comes down as a horizontal slide and if we click on it you're going to see what it looks like as it's fuzzy slowly loading right and so um typically it breaks it down like this where one bedroom two bedroom three and four it gives you the median price tells you the monthly payment talks about interest rates and last months last years current and this is an easy slide. And you can see there's um, not really the 20, the difference in the payments are between 20% down and 3% down. And then that, I, I don't know, somebody could click on that, you know, take a picture of the QR code and tell me what it says. I'm not too sure what the QR code does, but we'll talk about that later. So all of the counties in California are listed here. Not every city, as I mentioned, but you might want to do that. Uh, find the city if there's some. You could post it on social media. The Instagram, which is the square, um, has, let me see, how many do they have? They have, so they. if you've seen an Instagram where there's a series of, of pictures all sort of in one post. This is an example. So you'd be downloading all of them. We go back and, and you can see in Instagram, there would be each of the different ones would have its own picture. You get the idea, right? Something to, to play with. Yeah, if we go back, what else is on this? Housing market overview, 
Um, the county market report is something you've probably seen before that agents are posting it. It's sort of an eight and a half by 11 look, right? It's got different stats in it. Um, those of you that are in a MLS where they're trying to sell you AccuList reports, um, this kind of looks like them anyhow. And again, you can download it as a PNG or a PDF. Uh, what else? Um, there's a seller report, which obviously you could use for sellers. And um, again, there's a PDF and a PNG image. Both of them are eight and a half by 11 ish in terms of the way they're laid out. And it takes a little while to load because I'm using lots of resources. And you can see there's a, a guide that's got graphs and charts and pictures and things like that. Not everybody cares about this, but if you're in a market where there are lots of engineers who like statistics and things like that. Anyhow, I'm not going to open them all up because I assume somebody's asking me a question. Let me, uh, this is, how did you get to the marketing from the CAR home screen? That's harder. <laughs> I gave you the link, which I've bookmarked, but if you look up here in the URL, it's car.org, market data, interactive view, all shareable reports. And so if I were in at the home, I would look for market data and market data, it's easier just to bookmark it, is uh, under industry 360, is that right? Market data and then interactive and here's shareable reports that was challenging for me to find it again because i bookmarked it i actually keep it in the google keep which is easily acceptable through all my google-ish things where i just touch it and it opens up and i have the reports right and so you might want to look at that you've paid for them right those of you that are paying your mls dues You've already paid for them, right? So why not, why not use them, right? They have other things, but of all the things that they have, that's probably one of the more useful. The other thing that I wanted to spend some time on are some of the EXP tools to market a listing, as it says on the screen. And um, it was... Uh, generous enough to let me practice on a listing that he has, although I've figured out how to use my KV core, but if if it's not working, we'll we'll borrow his. But there are a couple of places where you can get tools for a um, to market a listing. <clears throat> One of them is in KV core. Now, there are a couple of different areas in KV core where you can market a listing. The first one, if you have a listing and it's in your MLS and it's active. So in some MLSs coming soon show up, if you're in MLS listings and it's a members only, it oftentimes it may or may not show up. But the first thing you'd wanna do is go to playbooks and a play, <clears throat> is a activity. It's something to do, right? And you can see that they keep saying that they're having more of these, but I haven't, it's been like this for a long time. One of them is called promote a listing. That might be a good place to start, right? So you got a listing, it's in the MLS. And by the way, lots of things work well if it's in the MLS. Now, if you're saying, well, it's not in the MLS and I still want to do it, and how can I do it if it's not in the MLS? The answer is you have to put the listing in as a manual listing, which you can do. You can type a description, you can upload photos, you can do all that, right? But, but, but that's a pain. If you wait for it to be in the MLS and you've uploaded the photos and written a description and all that, it'll automatically synchronize with all that information, which saves you a lot of time. So if we go here and I'm going to pick, I'm just picking random listings, right? Here's a nice, I like Santa, I grew up in Santa Cruz. Why not? Why not? So I'm going to pick a, a listing. 
Now, <clears throat> some of you are thinking, well, doesn't have to be my listing. Well, yes and no. Um, if you were to ask the multiple listing service, can I market listings from my brokerage? They're going to say yes, absolutely, right? Because you're part of the same brokerage, the listings belong to the broker, go for it. If you were to call the Department of Real Estate, you'd have to be on hold for three or four hours. But if eventually you were able to talk to a deputy commissioner and you said, I'm a part of a brokerage and I want to promote a listing that belongs to the brokerage, it's not mine, can I do that? They're going to say yes. Go ahead. It's encouraged. Go for it. If you read the EXP policies and procedures to see if there's any specific rule that says you cannot promote another agent's listing, you're going to see it's not there. I've looked. I've looked. Right. Um, I'm going to look again. Uh, they may have up, but it's not there. Okay. So, but wait a second. I went to a state meeting. And the broker said, you're not supposed to promote another agent's listing without their permission. Yeah, I, I, I've heard that. But I can't find that in any of the XP rules. So why would they say it? What they don't want is for the listing agent to go to the broker room and complain that you're stealing their listing and promoting the listing. Right. And then then they just don't want to hear it. Right. You understand there's a lot of agents at EXP. They just don't want to hear it. So one option is you could just pretend that no one's ever told you not to promote another agent's listing. It doesn't violate MLS rules, doesn't violate DRE rules. And I don't see it anywhere in the policy manual. Um, or you could send an email a text message to the listing agent saying, hey, I saw your listing on Etrin's Drive. It looks great. Um, is it okay for me to promote this to potential buyers? Now, sometimes the agent will say, sure, right? I would, by the way, um, because why not, right? But other agents sometimes are, you know, they, they want to double in the, their whatever reason, they might say no. They might say no. All right, now you have to, you know, now what are you going to do? Find another one. Or you could just pretend that you hadn't heard anything I just said up till now. It's a company listing. You just click on the button and you start promoting it. I, I mean, you know, um, but I'm, I'm assuming you're doing this because it's your listing. Right? Now, in the plays, the first one is the contact matching buyers. What this assumes is that you're using KV Core with buyers and you've got a bunch of them and you're going to want everybody that you've got that's interested in Santa Cruz and in that price range, you, you want to send it to them, right? Now, you may or may not have anybody like that, but you'll see there's a text message. They have to have opted in in order to receive the text message or you had to manually put in their contact information to KV Core because they're afraid you're going to use texting spam. That's I, I can't imagine why they would think real estate agents would abuse that. I, I just can't imagine. Um, but if you manually put them in or they opt in, then you can send them text messages. You also could send them an email. They have a, a sample email. This is not something I use a lot because most of the buyers I'm working with, I've set up as searches in the MLS. And the MLS search is better than an IDX search. IDX means Internet Data Exchange, which is what you get with any company website. What that means is that your website mm -hmm. Your KV Core only searches those listings in your area that are in your MLS. And if you look at all the listings in your area, you'll see that some are not. Certain parts of California, this is a bigger deal. San Francisco Bay Area has like five different MLSs. Los Angeles and Orange County and that whole greater LA area has two MLSs. 
And if you're in LA and a member of the MLS, your search will not find properties in CRMLS. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So the goal, the reason we use KV Core is not necessarily to take over searching for listings, right? I'm going to talk about this in my buyer series, which is coming up. We're not going to be doing this in lieu of setting up an MLS search because the MLS search, if you're in LA and you're in the MLS and you set up an MLS search, it would include listings from CRMLS, but your website won't because it's only hooked to your prime. I think I've done it enough. All right. So I usually skip that. Utilize a custom text code. Now this is kind of cool. Text and they, they'll, this would be, the code would be that. Huh. Um, and th this is called a smart number. Now, what's that? Right, because you may be thinking, I don't recognize that number. Uh, now, what a smart number is, <laughs> it's a KV core number that um, would connect you to the number for people that call it. If, if they're in your database or there is some other something, piece of information that connects you to it. In this case, it would be this, right? So if I'm doing this, and by the way, you might want to worry that the other agent has already done it. But anyhow, if I'm doing this and somebody were to put in 32 East Ridge and text it to that number, right? They, 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 you'll see what it looks like when we do an example. Um, you would, it would, what is it going to do? It's going to send them information about the listing using your website with KV Core, which has your branding, your picture, your name, your phone number. I want to see it. It goes to you. All right. So it's a text code. It also captures their number because they're texting to it. Let me see. There's more more questions. Um, your hair looks nice today. Thank you. <laughs> that was a direct message. But um, my response to that is, what do you mean today? I mean, really? What do you mean today? I, I was. Um, but this would be something you could put on flyers and postcards and all that other kind of stuff. Um, how would you put it on a sign that looks like that sign? I, I mean, you know, well, you could have it printed. I don't know. That doesn't sound very good. Well, the way we take custom information and stick it on a for sale sign is well, you go to the internet and what you're going to search for is Avery um, bumper stickers, Avery bumper stickers. Huh? And what is an Avery bumper sticker? It's, why don't we all just do an image just to make us take less time, is it's, uh, and that didn't really help. This looks like one. Custom bumper stickers. There's a bumper sticker. So what an Avery bumper sticker label is, it's something you can feed through an inkjet or laser jet printer that's eight and a half by 11 and it's broken into little you know sections and you can print a message like you know text 32 east ridge 2 and you know for instant information you could put that on it and you it peels off the back and you can stick it on things now, if you stick it on your sign, sometimes when you take it off, it might remove paint a little bit, maybe sometimes. So what I usually do is I stick it on the post. So it's, and because it's designed as a bumper sticker, it can withstand for a while at least, wind and rain and sun, right? Because it was that Avery sticker was designed to be put as a bumper sticker where it's exposed to wind and rain. It's not all right. Coolio. What else are we going to do? Well, there's also social media. Now, the boost now pays for boosting it. 
which means that it's you're going to have to give up some money and it will be boosted in social media. Now, I'm not entirely sure this is a cost-effective idea. I'm not entirely sure, right? Because very few people say they found their house because it was on a Facebook. It might make the owner happy, but I'm just saying you might want to look at that. Um, if you, a property boost would create a page like this and you can pay money and they'll send it out. If you just go to digital promotion, what it's going to do is give you things that you can paste on social media, right? It's going to give you things, a squeeze page, a landing page, and Craigslist. So a landing page is a page that requires that people give up some information before they get to look at the listing, right? This is what it would look like. This is how it comes right out of the box. People would enter their email, they'd put in a cell phone optional, they click on it, now they can see more about the property. Somebody might do that. Oops, that's not it. That's not it. Where am I? Where's KB Here we are. Um, the squeeze page is the page that somebody would go to if they filled out a landing page. So what would that look like? I don't know. That's not right. How about here? It would look like this. I hope so. All right. So notice this has got my branding on it. It's got my, you know, want to see it? Request to showing. It goes to me. It's got lots of information about the property. That's the squeeze page. Before you take out your, your credit card and you buy a single property website, check this out. Because you might say, oh, well, that's sort of a single property website. I don't really need to pay anybody to create one. It's already been created in KV Core. Craigslist. Hmm. Generate. Now, if you've installed, which I think I have, but I think it, it didn't like it. Uh, and so I had to redo it. But there's a Chrome extension, which I'm going to go ahead and add. All right. And now I've got it. Yay. So there's this icon here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pin it so it doesn't go away right away. So I've installed the Craigslist Chrome extension and I'm going to generate a text code and I'm going to post to Craigslist. And what it's going to do, hopefully, is I don't see it doing it. <laughs> But it's supposed to um, it's supposed to be posting at the Craigslist, but I don't see any Craigslist movement. Maybe I have to log into Craigslist in order to do that. Let's just see. Is that what's holding it up? Now, I don't um, you have to be careful with this. And the reason you have to be careful is that in Craigslist, they're going to put in the smart number. Right. And that smart number is not what you really want on Craigslist. Well, I don't even see it. It doesn't seem to be working. Uh, but let's try one more time. I'll redo this page. Let's see if it's happy now. And so what I what it does, but it's obviously not doing it right now, is uh, oh well. Here I'm going to go back here to this one. Here we are. Revisit, leverage social media, property boost, digital promotion, post to Craigslist. Uh, there's something about the Craigslist extension it's not happy about. So let me, I'm not going to spend a lot of time fixing it right now. It does write a very nice Craigslist post. Very nice. My issue is it uses the smart number. Now, the smart number, if I send you a text message using the smart, the smart number, let me put it this way, is a shared number. So in the Silicon Valley area, it's a 925 number. The other one is Santa Cruz. It has a different number. I don't know why. There's more than one smart number, but I'm not the only one that has that number. You're not, if you get, if you don't pay KV Core for your own personal smart number, then you're not the only one using it. 
Now, if you send somebody a text message using your smart number and they call that number, it's going to go to you because KV Core is smart enough to know that you're the one that texted them. If they're in your database as a contact, including their phone number, and they call the smart number, KV Core is smart enough to know that they're one of your contacts and routed to you. But Craigslist, people may be calling that number that are not in your database. That would be my assumption. And so how would they know? How would they know? And so what I usually do is I change the smart number in the Craigslist ad to a Google voice number or something like that so that they call me. It's not a big deal, but I'm, I'm the Craig's the whole Craigslist thing is, is not a big deal. Following up a seller report email. I don't use that. Um, a smart campaign would be a campaign and there's a bunch of them already um, where you could, and I'm not going to go through campaigns is something else we could do later. We would use, let's say the default campaign is not a bad one. And so what a campaign is, if we use the landing page for this listing and anybody filled that out, they automatically would be put into our database as a potential buyer and this campaign would launch. And it does give them a search and it does have email messages and it'll, it'll do it over a period of time, right? Which saves you, saves you time. Any questions about the playbook? No, you're all good. Don't everybody blurt out a question at once. All right, but there's more. <laughs> how much time do I have? More, how could there possibly be more? Well, there's a tab called marketing. And notice that one of them is called the core listing machine. That sounds intriguing. And a design center. Hmm. Since we're talking about listings, why not that? Now, when you first do this, for both the design center as well as the core listing machine, what you're going to find is this thing pops up that says, we want to take you through some steps. Dismiss it. They're going to say, oh, if you dismiss this, you're not going to ever see it again. Dismiss it because there's like a glitch in it. And what I what we're going to be doing is right now, there isn't a lot to do on this at this moment. But what we're really interested in is to go to the design center. All right. Now, in the top right, in the top right. Underneath your name, there's a gear. And the gear says settings and media library. If you click on the gear, what we're if you don't like the blue, you can change it, I guess. If you don't like the font, I, I don't ever mess with any of that stuff. But notice over here social media settings. Do you Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, etc.? Now, Instagram, notice there's a, um, Instagram does not allow auto posting. I, I have a program that I use to um, post things. Hey, Michael. Who's that? Am I, you know? I don't think that's here. Here it is. Somebody is in my, in my space. Oh, somebody came over to talk to me. Well, anyhow, I'm going to, I'll go back to the world at some other time. I was hearing voices again, right? And don't be worried. I, I know that those voices aren't real. I mean, they have good advice sometimes. But anyhow, so if you connect Facebook, Instagram, what happens is they send it to your phone. And then from your phone, you post it on Instagram. But LinkedIn, you connect Twitter. Who cares about that anymore? And YouTube, if you don't have a YouTube channel, you might want one. How would you set up a YouTube channel? Do you have a Gmail account? If so, you can create a YouTube channel. Pretty easy. 
And the reason you would go through this process is because this system can automatically post stuff on your social media accounts. Like, well, what are you talking about? Well, let's say you want to make a flyer. Now, I'm going to show you other ways of making flyers before we're done. I got to hurry. But let's say you're in a hurry and you need a flyer. And you can see there's a lot of different kinds of flyers. What we're looking to, because we got a nice listing, is I'm looking for a listing promotion flyer. And because we have lots of nice pictures, I think so, we're going to pick um, one that says two pages, right? And I'm just going to pick one. Now, over here, I have to remember what's the 32 East Ridge. Hmm. Uh, all right, oops, there we go, 32, East Ridge, all right, seven photos, status is just listed, see this QR code thing, I'm not going to put it here, but I'll put it on the second page, actions, I could download it, all right, and what I'm going to do, but I'll, I'll just leave it there, so this is what the flyer looks like, pictures and things like that, if I go to page two, more pictures and a description. You see that big white space right there? What I'm going to do is click on QR code and then it wants to know where my EXP website. Notice what it did. It created a QR code, which I know takes up a lot of room. You could stick it up here. You could put it down here. So, you know, whatever. I don't believe, uh, I, I know I can resize it. Let me do this. Z. I'm going to hold down the control key. I can make it a little bit smaller. But anyhow, I've now added a QR code. Um, yes, I am, Isadora. There we go. So I've added a QR code, which some people like. They can what are what happens when you shoot that code with your phone? You go to the landing page, to this page here. I mean the squeeze page. That's where you'll end up, your branding, your branding. Now, notice this is not my listing. That's when I was talking about all this, right? It's a company list, but I might need a flyer doing it open up. So that's one thing I can do. Am I going to save it? Oh, how about this? I'll save and close, right? In case I'm never in Santa Cruz. So that's a, a flyer, and you can see there's a bunch of flyer layouts. Is it a perfect flyer? Is it the greatest flyer? No. How long did it take me to make that flyer? Not very long. And that's because all that was already in the MLS and the, I, I could just import it. Let's say I wanted to do a social media post. Right? Here's a bunch of different kinds of social media posts. Some of them, by the way, are ways to prepare your home for winter. And other stuff like that. Um, I'm, I'm not really interested in all that right now, but let's say a listing promotion. I click on this one. I'm going to pick 32 East Ridge Drive. Come on, there we go. Um, and it's generated. And I could add some other things, but it, it generated something just listed. And uh, you might want to put in your information and your DRE number. But we've, you know, it's created the basic part. There's places here to add some stuff. You could share it on social media, email, text message, copy the link. All right. And so if I copy the link, let's see, what do I get? That's what it looks like. Now, if you're doing this on social media, you should, in your social media profile, identify yourself as a real estate agent that works with EXP Realty and have your DRE number and other things. All right. So it doesn't necessarily have to be on this image as long as it's everywhere else. Uh, can we do a listing from another company? Uh, the answer is, um, can you do it if it's another? The answer is, in the abstract, the answer is yes. If a listing agent who's authorized to speak to the broker, by the way, 
and that's not a question. The listing agent is, according to the MLS, authorized to speak for the broker, and that agent says yes, then you can promote the listing. And I know agents, my suggestion is, is you send an email to all of them and say, hey, I saw your listing, it looks really great. Would it be okay with you if I promoted it to potential buyers? Now, if they say, yes, sure, I'm going to take that as I can do anything I want, right? Because they said it. Um, but it's not going to work automated in the system. And the reason is because the system is not going, I do not believe the system will allow you to pick any listing. It has to be a EXP listing in order for it to do automatically. But you want something even more cool. This isn't cool enough. So you go to video. That sounds pretty cool. And what we're going to do is there's a video design. We're going to click on that. And then we're going to wait for it to spin around and spin around and spin around. And then we're going to go back here and we're going to type in 32 East Ridge Drive. All this looks the same. I want to hear some music. And so what it's done is it's, I don't hear the music. Oh, this is why. There's a reason I did that on purpose just to demonstrate what you're supposed to do. You have to say what kind of music do you want? Fender Bender, Fire Dancer. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to see. <laughs> All right, that's what that is. How about Blue Moon? And I'll turn it down a little bit. Okay. Don't have to see the whole thing, but that's not bad, is it? Now, over here, if I say, well, I want it. Now, by the way, you can do a voiceover, right? You have to upload a recording of you talking about it, right? You can do that. And if you generate a video, what it's going to do is it's going to process the video and email you a link. And from that link, you'll be able to download it. You'll be able to post it. It makes a video of your listing based upon the pictures once you put it into the MLS. Cool, I think, cool. Okay, now, um, did we, what's a website? Well, I this is all nice, but do you give me like, you know, a, an actual website? Well, let's see, if we go to 32, let's see if we can keep finding our Eastridge Drive, and we are going to want, uh, Eastern Drive website. What am I doing? I wanted it to be a website. There we go. And so um, I'm going to click on the design of the website. Put in 32 Eastridge Drive. And there we go. And it's making a website. My goodness, what would that look like? Well, if we view the website, <clears throat> we're going to get something that looks like this. And they could click on view gallery and see all the pictures. There's information, stuff about the property, a map, full property details takes you back to your squeeze page, my information, send me information about the property. You get all, by the way, you get all of this as your part of your KV Core subscription, the $85 a month that you pay to EXP, 50 of it goes to KV Core. And you get to do all these different things. Wow. All right. So, and yes, people are saying they didn't know this existed. That's why I'm here. All right. That's why I'm here. But you're saying, you know, I, I really think that there could be better looking, um, better looking flyers. You know, I want, I want a better looking flyer. And so, because we've been doing this with 32 Eastridge, 
Let's just see if we can find it. There we go. Now, what I'm doing now, while I, you see this up here, MLS number, I'm going to copy that. So what else? I want something that looks nicer. This isn't good enough for me. So I'm going to go to the EXP Marketing Center. And one of the things you're going to find is there's automated farm packages, auto, excuse me, marketing packages, where for a fee, they will make you flyers and postcards and things like that. And you can, there's a part of it that you could use on a listing presentation. That's called the listing kit, where you actually can take things and show it to somebody like this little box these are all the different kinds of marketing material i do or if you have a listing you could click here and by paying them a nominal fee of i forget what it is but it may not be here print price um there's a fee involved in this but it, they'll make all of this stuff for you but if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you have a listing, let's say you're going to do an open house, right? Why not? You want an open house flyer. Now, by the way, the KV court system will make an open house flyer, but there's this one's a little classier. So we're going to choose a design. You're going to go down and you're going to find one that you like, right? There's not a thousand of them, but you know, it's just an open house. So um, how about this one? I like that one. So I've picked a design. Now, now that I'm here, up in this corner, you'll see it says MLS Lookup. I paste it in. I hit search. I sure hope this works. Here it is. And we're going to say yes. And what it's doing now is it's taking those pictures and things that are on the MLS, and it's importing them into the flyer. Notice the pictures have all changed. They're the same pictures we've been looking at. Now, it doesn't necessarily have all the features. You can see there's some missing things here. You might have to cut and paste. You might have to change, you know, some of the information, like, you know, the day is probably not today. Um, you know, there's this one is only one-sided. There are other ones that are two-sided, and there's more pictures on the back. And how hard was that? And if you don't like the picture because um, you don't you just don't want the picture, you want a better picture. Let me see which one of my. How about that one? Don't I look cool in that one? And then there, yes. How isn't that amazing? And I do that, and so now I have you know my cool, cool guy picture. So you can add some things, but this has saved a lot of time. I'm just saying, right? You know, now I can download it over here, print it myself. I could order prints, really? Now, I have agents who are oftentimes asking me about what kind of computer do I need and do I need a printer? A Chromebook will do most everything that a real estate agent's ever going to need to do because everything is brown. I could do all of what I've done today on my Chromebook. In fact, right there is a Chromebook where I could do all of this if I wanted to. And um, we don't print as much as we used to, but if we accepted this as a proof, we can order it and it'll be printed. If we do it by one o'clock PM, it goes the next day. And you can check out the printing, but it's generally competitive. But I use a company in this, I, I use a local company that um, will print flyers and they'll just drop them to you. But, you know, these will be, you could order them and they would be delivered to your house within a relatively short period of time. Um, there's a lot of online printing companies. And these, and I, I haven't, these prices are roughly in line with it, right? I know that KB Core has a way for you to print some of that stuff. And they use like Instaprint, which is an online printing company. Um, I think maybe not, but um, but you get the idea. All of the designs, and like here's a two-sided one, all of these designs, you can just order it to be printed and shipped to you. 
You can just, let me do this again. They come out pretty decent on a home printer as well. Yeah. And, and you don't need a super expensive printer. You don't need a laser printer. Um, you can find, if you're, if you're in the market for a printer, get a multi-function copy scan inkjet printer. It costs a hundred and something bucks. And if and and I by the way don't I even though I have a printer that scans I use on my phone Microsoft Office's scanning which is works really well and I just take it with my and it uploads it to OneDrive and it'll send it to somebody it scans really good but if you can get a inexpensive inkjet printer we don't print contracts and things like that hardly ever. Right. You know, we you might print flyers for an open house. How many are you going to give out on a weekend? Not 50. Probably not 50. And by the way, if people show up and let's say you had one flyer in one of those plastic holders with the QR code and you said to people, hey, yeah, I'm sorry, we're all out of flyers. Take a picture. Right? Take a picture. Or text me that text code, and I'll send you all the information. Uh, you know, good idea. You, you really need to have pieces of paper to hand them. I mean, it's 2024. I mean, really, right? So you might want to think about that. And one of the values of the YouTube is if you take your video and you put it on YouTube, that can be you can have you can say, text me and I'll send you a YouTube or virtual tour of the property, right? And the, you send them the YouTube video. Um, what else? So if we're back to the marketing center, you can see there's lots of different stuff. How am I doing? I got nine more minutes. So um, if we go back, there are more flyers for these are the the various same group kind of of flyers and if you don't like anything right you say i don't like any of the kv core flyers and i don't like any of these i want i want this font and i want you know then you know go go you know go to canva and go for it just go and make your own but um what the point of all this automation is is that you can spend your time talking to people about buying, selling, or investing, as opposed to desktop publishing and graphic design. And you can see there's a whole lot of things that you can find. You ought to be curious and go through the marketing center and click on everything. You want a just listed postcard that you're going to send to the neighborhood? You want to send out a open house? Uh, you know, we got those automated postcards. I'm not entirely thrilled with the content, but you can, you know, it'll send things over time. Like, you know, you, you know, if, if these are postcards. So the holiday things, and then there's some tips and things like that. Uh, and um, in some of these, EXP actually also has connections to data lists that you could get. But if you're looking for, let's say you listed a house and you wanted to have a, let me just put it this way. My suggestion is, is if you have a listing and it's the first weekend, do two open houses each day. Hmm? Now, the first open house is going to start like at 11 o'clock. It's only going to be the invitations are going to be just sent to owners that occupy the property, let's say a hundred maybe in the neighborhood. Now, when I would send those out, my postcard said, are you a nosy neighbor, right? That's what it said. And it would say, we've just listed the property at 32 at East Ridge Drive in Santa Cruz your neighbor's home at 32 East Ridge Drive. We've listed it. We're having a special open house at 11 o'clock Saturday just for the neighbors. The owners are not going to be there. Refreshments will be served. And then when people show up at 11, 
you know that they're a neighbor that got your postcard because the normal open house starts at one o'clock. But the special neighbor open house starts at 11. You would then have material that would fall into the category of a pre-listing material, which we have about selling your house, RPR, Realtors Property Resource Reports about the market and things like that, your list of services, and everyone who shows up at that time is a potential seller. You know, the, the nosy neighbor, we know you want to know what they've done to the property. We know you do. Come over, take a look, ask questions. Then at one o'clock, then you tear down after an hour, right? Then the that one, and you put up buyer-related stuff like school rankings and things like that. You get all that ready for the one to four normal open house. It's just a thought, right? Just a thought. What else? Um, I have a Facebook group. Excuse me. That was a, a slip of the tongue. I have a workplace group called the Michael Devlin Group, it would um, it would seem appropriate oops, that I have that. So I posted a couple things recently, one just a little while ago, and this is revised 2024 home price forecasts. And what it discusses is that back in November, all the prognosticators said, this is what we think is going to happen to prices in 2024. And you can see they've all revised them and they've all gone up. Some like Golden Sachs went from under two to 5% increase in prices projected. And you can see they're kind of all over the place, but does it look like prices are going to fall in 2024. Does it look like that? Probably not. I also posted this just an hour ago because I have no social life. So, you know, I have nothing else to do. And what about the crash? We're waiting for the crash, right? Well, the back in January of 2023, 61% of the economists said crash. Now, well, it's under 40%. And with 61% saying no crash, no recession. And so the projections are not a crash. For all those nervous about an upcoming violent recession that will rock the economy, well, the economists surveyed by the Wall Street Journal don't think it's going to happen. Right? Not anymore. And so this is information that would be good for you to have you can repost it, steal, steal that, steal the picture, steal this, steal the, I stole it from somebody in case you're wondering. I just stole it from somebody too. I, I researched, right? This is what's in real estate is called R&D, right? Which in real estate means rip off and duplicate. Right? That's I think what R&D means. Um, what else did I have on my list? All right, so we've done all that. Other things, I did that part, the president, EXP listing solutions. And I want to get this address. All right, I'm going to do two more things. So EXP listing solutions. Um, this is a search thing, flow code is, and this may require a minimum contribution, is a super QR code kind of a thing. I mean, it, it gives you special fancy QR codes that you can use, it tracks, it gives you analytics and things like that. Um, these are other things that eXp has. Um, blah, 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 blah. A Curbio is a program where you can get an estimate. They'll fix stuff and bill escrow. So if your seller needs to do some upgrades, they need to do some fixing. And you could say, hey, we got a program where they'll fix it and bill escrow. iSpy360 is a virtual home tour, a 360 home tour. Notice I sort of made one, didn't I, using just the KV Core system. This one definitely looks nicer. It definitely looks nicer. Um, one other final thing, artificial intelligence. 
Um, you've heard about it. What does AI stand for? And you might be thinking, well, you just said it. If you're interested in getting into this, AI would stand for all in, right? Getting all in. So what I'm going to do, this, by the way, is using the free version of Chat GPT, right? The free version. Write a property description, R-P-P-I-O-N, for a real estate listing for, and I'm pasting in the address. Notice I haven't told them anything else other than here's the address. And you can see it's come up with a bunch of information about the area. Right? And no, and some of it um, would, uh, let me try Gemini, which is another one. Also, this one is free. Oops, let me go back because I'm super lazy. Uh, now, if I took the description that we already had and I pasted it in, Let's see how Gemini does. I have not, I picked 32 East Ridge, just, you know. Um, now, Google is being a little bit more, you know, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're a little more cautious. But many times when I've done this, it knows how many bedrooms and bathrooms it has. So if I took some of this information, like here, and uh, Pasatiempo, nice area. And I simply said, um, include the following and the previous response into one description. And then I paste in all that and, and away it goes. You know, and it's writing, it's writing stuff about it. So just thought I would share that with you. Um, can I do a class on how to, yes, I can do a class on how to use JPT, chat GPT. Uh, make it, well, I've been playing around since the last meeting. It's great. You have to make it, yeah, it gives you some ideas and it, it's not necessarily perfect. But one of the things that chat GPT does or knows is it knows that location and what's around it. When it first came out, I gave it, notice it, it doesn't have the bedrooms and bathrooms, but I gave it a listing that was coming on the market that I had without, it hadn't been on the market in a really long time and it knew how many bedrooms and bathrooms and square footage, it, it knew all that. Um, oops, and I'm being thrown out of that, oh well. Um, just thought I would share that with you. Right? It's a nice way sometimes to come up with a description. Okay, uh, can I talk to you five minutes after the meeting? Maybe, yes. Um, yes. So I'm going to stop recording. This will be up on the YouTube channel. I hope you found today's useful. Every week I'm going to talk about how to make a marketing piece or do something using the software you already have access to, for, with. And I'll see you all later. If you want to listen to what my, can other people hear us or do I have to kick everybody else? Thank you very much, Mike.